Welcome to the final series of Q&A with the Fertility Godmother in honor of National Infertility Awareness Week. I don't like saying infertility, but I do think it's really important and, and powerful to discuss and bring awareness so that we can support you through this journey and you can support others by sharing your story and getting some information that can be really beneficial for you on your journey. So today we are going to talk about um, dudes count too, because dads absolutely count and are important on this journey. And I don't know if you've experienced this or not, but it feels like most of the pressure lies on the on the woman and. I get that because the eggs, your eggs are really powerful and they can do a lot of magic if they're strong and really healthy. But if you're struggling to try to get pregnant, then you want to make sure that both of you are really strong and healthy and vital because it really is, in my belief, a couple's issue. And I think it, it makes perfect sense. We have the DNA coming from the woman and the DNA coming from the man, they merge together to make a baby. It's 50-50. So yes, I know the, the, the egg is much stronger. And if there's, but if there's too many issues with that sperm as, the, as it um, penetrates and, and enters into the egg and tries to fertilize the egg, and the egg is assessing that sperm and there's too many issues, it's not going to work. So, and especially if you're having advanced maternal age or you know you're having an egg quality issue so you want to get your eggs absolutely you want to get those eggs in your body as healthy as possible and at the same time the dad the dude the sperm count too so today i'm going to talk to you uh, or share with you about um, a couple questions that i got asked and i hear often and some people don't really like what i'm going to say right now so here it goes. Uh, one of the questions I got was, can I get pregnant if my husband smokes weed four times a week? Well, there is um, mixed studies on that. And I'm going to say it's going to make it more challenging. So if you're already challenged trying to conceive, then you both need to do everything in your power to get as healthy as possible and not create more obstacles. And I would look at smoking marijuana four or five times a week every day as an obstacle. It's just going to make you guys have to work that much harder and maybe have more miscarriages, maybe have less chances of conceiving because we know that it impacts the, the epigenetics of the sperm. We know that it impacts the tail of the sperm. We know that it can impact the whole morphology, the motility, slows them down. So that is science and that, that is what we know. So I hear this from people who don't want to give it up. Yes, I know people get pregnant who, um, who's the father smokes marijuana. And at the same time, if you're having challenges and the goal is to have a healthy baby, then you're going to want to stop smoking weed for the time being. And then once you're pregnant and safe in your pregnancy, then I'll be it he can start smoking again if that's something that's really important to him. So I'm nothing against smoking marijuana. I just have, I just don't think that it serves you when you're trying to have a baby. Um, and that goes the same thing for alcohol. So uh, the, another question was asked about um, how much alcohol can I drink uh, in, while I'm trying to conceive. So the safe, the safe amount of alcohol to drink is under four drinks for regular size drinks a week. And um, there's certain alcohols that are better than others to drink. And for some reason, I don't know if it's the gluten in beer, I don't know the reason why, but the studies seem to show that beer is the least friendly for your sperm. So um, limit it to four beers. You don't have to stop drinking the beer, but you wanna limit it to at least four beers a week. And I have a video that you can um, you can look up. How can 
we'll we can we'll put we'll put a link for you in the in my bio for so that you can take a look at it. I know that it, I have it's I can, or you can go to YouTube for it. I, and we talk about I interview Dr. Paul Torek without male fertility, and we talk about this even more in depth. So if you want to get some more information where I interview Dr. Torek, please hop over there to my YouTube page, or you can click the link in the bio, and we'll. We'll um, put a link over there for you, so you can hop on over there and find that out. Uh, so the things you can do, the, the dudes can do to increase sperm is the same thing as women. You got to eat healthy, you got to manage your stress, manage your stress in a different way if you're taking things to help you, and um, exercise. You want to avoid like your cell phone in your pocket. You want to avoid putting your laptop on your lap if you have a barrier, especially now we're working at home a lot more. You want to avoid that area because of the radiation. So you have to realize that the tissue of the scrotum is really sensitive and, and toxic, and you want to avoid any type of um, oxidative stress. So I'm just trying to see if I could find another word, but oxidative stress is when you produce a lot of free radicals and they cause damage to the cells and they cause damage to the sperm. So things you can do to help that would be lots of greens, wheatgrass. I usually recommend wheatgrass shots. Uh, you can eat a lot of vegetables, eat a lot drinking ton, tons of water, and there's supplements that you can take. The basic supplements are D, C, E, zinc. So, um, and L-arginine and L-carnitine. Those are the basic ones that you can take. Um, you can take a men's vitality. There's so many, so many supplements. I'm happy to help you. If you need some help, just go ahead and, and uh, click, click the link or DM me and I can help you find which supplements, depending on your case, um, would be best for you. There's also Chinese herbs. So if you have low motility or morphology, Chinese herbs and acupuncture work amazing to help with that believe it or not, they really do. Those herbs are, I like to call them magic. They're not magic, but I like to call them magic. Um, so those are some really important things, important tips, I think. The, and the dude does matter. So everything that you guys are gonna be doing together to work towards having a healthy baby is gonna make a huge difference in not only the success of you getting pregnant and staying pregnant, but making sure that you're giving your baby the best chances possible. So. Here's to your health, your fertility, and your future baby, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Mwah. Bye.